Having found out the truth about his brother's parentage, Patrick now has one last question about his father to follow up. I am very interested in understanding more about what the newspaper report called shell shock or post-traumatic stress disorder, as we call it today, what it means. Patrick is wondering if the condition may have continued to affect Alfred when he returned to civilian life after the war. I want to know how that could have been affecting the man I met when I was five years old, when he came back, when the war was over and his military service was done. Patrick's arranged to meet Robert Bieber, vice chairman of the veterans' mental health charity, Combat Stress. A little while ago, a few days ago, I was shown a newspaper report mm -hmm. which uh, recounted how my father had returned home from France suffering from shell shock as a result of aerial bombardment. I'm curious to know about what the lasting impact of shell shock might be and especially how it might be associated with domestic violence. Um, I don't think it was probably just a solitary event of the bombardment, but the likelihood is soldiers who were retreating with the French saw some pretty nasty elements of, uh, of the way that the Nazis treated the French civilians. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of evidence to show that treatment of them had a greater impact in some ways on soldiers than actual warfare as we know it. Obviously, I can only offer you probabilities rather than any, anything more than that because it's a long time ago. But when your father came home, he would have experienced issues of isolation, inability to communicate, um, nightmares, flashbacks, and perhaps domestic violence. I think the other thing is your dad was an old-time soldier. He knew how soldiers had been treated after the First World War. Um, <clears throat> those, could, those who couldn't be cured effectively were, were, were locked up in lunatic asylums and called service lunatics. The problems caused by battlefield trauma were first identified in World War I. 80,000 soldiers were diagnosed with shell shock. Treatment, varying from electroshock therapy to hypnosis, was largely ineffective. Some men were diagnosed as incurable and remained institutionalized for life. In the interwar period when Alfred joined up, shell shock was seen as a source of shame and weakness, and this attitude persisted through the next war and beyond. Although rehabilitation programs gradually became available, by the end of World War II, there were still 22,000 ex-servicemen in psychiatric hospitals. There are lots of tragic stories in which soldiers' families tried to extract their loved ones from mental hospitals and they were turned away because this man is slow, incapable of recovery, and they effectively died there. So these, those are one of the sort of many tragedies that happened. How capable would such a person be of asking for help? They would be capable of doing it, but because of the experiences that they've had, as I've described, about isolation and, uh, and not wanting to ask for charity, they'd be far less likely to do so. Even today, we don't see service in, in combat stress very often until between 12 and 14 years after their service has elapsed, by which time their condition has become entrenched. They become, I mean, I'm, I'm taking an extreme case, they become drink sodden, uh, very often they've been in prison, uh, their lives are very often disintegrated, and then it comes to domestic violence. Was there anything, Robert, that our family might have done that might have made things easier for my father? I doubt it, because hindsight is a wonderful thing. <sighs> Had your father been prosecuted for domestic violence, which itself is unlikely because he was a domestic as opposed to anything else. It's just possible he might have, he might have got a referral to a psychiatrist who um, might have then seen that there's a, there's a different kind of problem. And he, and he never talked to you about his experiences. In the war? Yes, he did. But did he ever sit down and say, I need you to know what it felt like? No. And he probably never told anybody that. 
this is surmise, but everything you're describing to me does sound as if he was a very poorly man. Mm. And that uh, he was one of those who was in the wrong place at the wrong time. Yes, yes, I can see that. I, I'm immensely grateful to you for all that you've told me. Um, you can't be aware, but your words are helping me to create and make significant readjustments about this man I knew. And when the green light comes on, you've got to jump. This is about the height we jumped. It seems very low. Yeah, well, the lower the better, because you get shot at. You don't want to float about. District reporter. That's right. A newspaper on which some 15 years later, I was to be a very insignificant junior reporter. Same newspaper.